Sam Hess, improving access to healthy food is the mission of your organization. And many low-income families rely on SNAP, the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, formerly known as Food Stamps, um, which has seen its, its funding cut. Talk about the significance, the importance of SNAP to the work that you do and what you'd like to see in terms of future policy vis-a-vis -vis SNAP. Oh. I will. Um, I'm uh, the executive director of Arcadia. We are a local group. We are working to fix the local food system and affect food access, particularly in Washington, D.C. One of my colleagues is here in the turban over there. Juju, raise your hand. <laughs> Juju is very important to what we do. Um, the piece that we do with food access is uh, a mobile market. We have two mobile markets. Last year they made 18 regular weekly stops in low food access neighborhoods, mostly in D.C. 16 of them were in D.C., one was in Virginia, one was in Maryland. And these are neighborhoods where you have a lot of people on SNAP, WIC, or Senior Farmers Market nutrition vouchers. They don't own cars. There's not a grocery store. It's not served by a farmer's market. This is the living embodiment of what you guys are talking about. Of If you build it, they will come. No, you have to bring it to where they are. One of the experiences that we have on the mobile market, which was recently brought up to me in a policy discussion here in DC, is that we have, even though we are tiny by comparison to the DC farmers markets, which are huge and really popular, because we're in the neighborhoods where people are living and working, because we put ourselves in their way, they use their SNAP benefits with us in a disproportionate amount than they do in farmers markets across the city and across the country. And it has everything to do with the fact that we are there and that we develop relationships with people. So the, there's a couple of programs that work at farmers markets. There's the WIC and Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Vouchers, which can only be used at farmers markets, and then there's SNAP. And SNAP you can use basically anywhere that accepts it. It is the sort of the standard food stamps. Um, I come to this with a weird background, as, as Allison mentioned. I'm not a nonprofit person by training. I'm, I'm a journalist by training. I covered the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, and it informs the way I have viewed this and, and how hard these issues have hit me. So in Iraq and Afghanistan, um, I think you guys know that the signature injury of that war is a lower limb amputation. And I spent time over there, and so consequently I spent time at Walter Reed in Bethesda visiting friends and friends of friends um, who had been injured and, and, and had um, a part of their leg or arm amputated. Um, so when I went out on the mobile market the first time, I saw a lot of young people in crutches and in wheelchairs, and I thought, oh, they're war veterans, right? That was my frame of reference, and I was quickly corrected, no, these are victims of diabetes. So I am about to blow your minds, just hold your head together. <laughs> there have been 5,000 amputations since the beginning of the Iraq and the Afghan wars on American service members and some civilians, including some journalists, friends of mine. Um, do you know how many amputations there are in this country from diabetes? Let's just pick one year, 2010, 73,000 mm -hmm. in one year. And this is from diabetes, and this is something that is absolutely preventable. It is caused by the food you eat, and it is prevented by the food you eat. Poor people are 10 times as likely to have an amputation from diabetes than a wealthy person who has diabetes. And that is often posited as, well, that's a problem with the healthcare system, right? There's inadequate healthcare. No, it's a problem with the food system. Poor people are two times as likely to be obese than wealthier people because poor people don't have access to actual food. Now, our entire country has a food problem. Two thirds of us are overweight, a third, more than a third are obese, but the poor, Low-income people that we're serving in Arcadia's mobile markets don't have a choice. They can't choose to eat healthy food because it's simply not available to them. So it's sort of this shocking situation to me that needs to be addressed, and I can't imagine why it's not being. Um, if you just take this down to dollars and cents, whether you're conservative or liberal, bring it all together, we spend $190 billion a year addressing chronic diseases that are caused by the food that we eat. And if you are a low-income person, the choices that you can make are proscribed. Mostly what you're getting access to is shelf-stable processed food. Try as you might, that's basically what you're gonna eat day in and day out, and that is a path to heart, hypertension, heart disease, some, causes, uh, some kinds of cancer, diabetes, and obesity, and all of the associated problems that come with this. And if you have any doubt that this has anything to do with food policy, this is people at home watching. This is not about, oh, well, people are just making bad choices. A, you have to have a choice in order to make a bad one. But what this really is about is our um, incredibly short-sighted view towards SNAP. See, I finally brought it around, Allison. Um, let me lay this one on you. Okay, this is so back to you get to have when you <laughs> journalism. I'm fired up. Back to, um, so 
diabetes. There was a study in the January 2014 issue of Health Affairs that rocked my world, and it just brought this home so hard. Um, they looked over eight years of data at people who were um, admitted to the hospital on an emergency basis for blood sugar issues. So diabetics and pre-diabetics, they had a blood sugar crash, they had to go to the hospital. Eight years of data in nine hospitals. And they looked, and every week it was about the same number of admissions regardless of income until the last week of the month when low-income people spiked by 27% because their food stamps ran out. So now, I get it, right? Food stamps, oh, we need money for it, and poor people, and they, whatever, and they should be eating better. Every one of those hospital admissions cost us $1,100, each single one. So another 20 bucks in food stamps would avoid an $1,100 hospital admission. Keep in mind that during those first three weeks of the month, people were equally as good, poor or rich, at maintaining their blood sugar until they could no longer do it because they didn't have the economic means to do it. So SNAP suffered a big cut last fall. Um, in 2009, uh, when the recession had really taken hold, there was the Recovery Act, and um, they put in an uh, increase in SNAP because a lot of people were losing their jobs and didn't have any money, and that increase automatically disappeared in November, and that was, I think, $5 billion. And it resulted in about $29 in a reduction in how much every was across the board cut and how much people got. Um, the farm bill that just came across included an $8.7 billion cut in SNAP over the next 10 years, and that was from something called the Heat and Eat um, program. So this one is going to be um, affecting, I think, 13 or 14 states, including D.C., and this has to do with basically how SNAP, um, the, the amount of paperwork involved in getting, in getting your SNAP, if you qualify for um, heating subsidies in these 13 or 14 states, you automatically get a, a certain addition of SNAP, and that has been taken away. So now you have to go and apply and prove, and it basically raises the bar for, for how much SNAP you can get. Um, so that's a problem, and I think there's another $6 billion cut that's coming down from the re Reinvestment and Recovery Act again, so brace yourselves. It's not going to be pretty. And here's what we see on the mobile market, and it's incredible, and Juju will tell you, most of the people that are shopping with us are working poor. They have jobs, they just can't make ends meet, they can't afford um, to get to the grocery store, it costs about $4, and for some people that's about a fifth of their food budget all week. So they walk to us and they buy the food. And what we do is double the value of SNAP WIC and Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Vouchers. So $10 on your EBT card gets $20 of food with us, and it's the highest quality food that you can have. We are not gleaning. We are not... Um, taking seconds from the stores. We are buying directly from great local farmers and growing a lot of the food ourselves. We're paying our farmers a fair price. They set the price. It's their wholesale price. And then we bring it into the neighborhoods and we separately raise money. Wholesome Wave um, has given us some donations. We've got donations from a bunch of other small things in order to match and double these benefits. And thank you. <laughs> it's, we didn't invent it. I have to say we didn't invent the program, but because we're in the, um, because we're in the, uh, in the neighborhoods, we are. Um, so it's making a huge difference. But the one thing I want to leave you with is this, is that we are in a battle with the big food companies, and this is my military background coming out again, we're in a battle, we're on the front lines, and um, the only way we win, they have set the conditions of the battlefield, and the only way we win is by fighting how they fight, and that is by offering convenience and taste and cheapness and ubiquity. That is how we get healthy food into people's bodies. It has to be there. That's the first step. And I think I'm done. Oh, thank you. <laughs> wow. Thank you. Wow.